You know, it took a lot of years for me to realize that I could not be selfish and happy at the same time. Maybe you've been unhappy and you've been wondering why. Well, it could be because you have yourself on your mind too much. Now, don't turn the television off just because I said that. I believe you're going to enjoy today's teaching. It's entitled, It's Not All About Me. Go to John chapter 5, verse 30. Amazing scripture in the Amplified Bible. Something that Jesus said, and, and I, we could just stare at it until there were holes in the paper, and I wonder if we'd still get it. First of all, he said, I am able to do nothing from myself independently of my own accord. Now, this is Jesus. I thought he could do anything. <laughs> but Jesus said, I can't do anything on my own independently. Now, obviously, he was God himself, and we know that on one hand, he could do anything he wanted to. <laughs> I mean, didn't he say when they were attacking him, don't you know if I wanted to call a legion of angels, I could? But he stood there and let them capture him. Why? Because he knew it was the will of God. So basically what he's saying here, he's not saying that he's not physically able or, or spiritually able, but what he's saying is, I won't do anything independently. I won't do anything without knowing that I've got God's approval. I won't step out on my own. And let me tell you, that takes a lot of dying to self. Because very often we don't like God's timing. He promises to never be late, but I have noticed in these years that I've served him that he is usually not early either. <laughs> and he will let you go to the very last second of the midnight hour. And yes, he's faithful and he always comes through, but sometimes it's a scary ride. Amen? Amen. I can't do anything myself, independently, of my own accord, but only as I'm taught by God and as I get his orders. Even as I hear, I judge, I decide as I am bidden to decide. And as the voice comes to me, so I give a decision. And my judgment is right, just, righteous, because I don't seek or consult my own will. <laughs> I don't get to vote. I don't ask myself what I like or don't like, what I want or don't want. You know what? You confer with yourself too often. We read last night about what I call the dumbest man in the Bible in Luke 12. Jesus was talking about greed and covetousness. And then he began to teach them by way of a parable. And he said there was a rich man who had a great harvest coming in. And he already had so much, he didn't even have any place to put this harvest. And so he had a conversation with himself. Well, let's see, what shall I do with my harvest? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll do this and I'll do that. I will, I will, I will, I will. Same problem Lucifer had. In just a couple of verses, he said, I will five times. <laughs> I will raise my throne above the throne of God. I will this and I will that and I will, I will, I will. And you know, so God says, well, let me tell you what's really gonna happen. <laughs> Here's the true story. You're going to be cast down to the ground. <laughs> well, this guy too. I'm going to build bigger barns and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I, man, I will, I will, I will, I will. And God said, you fool, don't you know this night? It's your last day here, buddy. <laughs> You're out. You know what? I don't think it would have gotten to that if he, if he would have been obeying God. I don't consult my own will. I remember when somebody asked me a few years ago, so Joyce, how do you like all this traveling? But you know what? I was really kind of pleased with my answer because I thought about it and I thought, you know what? I haven't asked myself in years. And you know what, I believe that's the only way you can do the will of God is if you stop asking yourself how you feel about it. Come on now. I said I believe the only way that you can do the will of God is if you stop asking yourself how you feel about it. 
I mean, God says to forgive, so I forgive. I stop asking myself how I feel about it because if I did, I'd tell you, I feel lousy about it. I don't like it. I want people to come and apologize to me. I'm fed up with humbling myself and always being the one to say I'm sorry. I don't think it's right and I don't think it's fair. So since that's not the attitude I'm supposed to have, I don't bother asking myself. Because I already know what myself is gonna say. Amen? How many of you are with me this morning? That's where we get in trouble, asking ourselves. We wake up in the morning, well, do I feel like going to church today? <sighs> no, but I think I feel like shopping. I think I feel like eating a half a dozen Krispy Kremes and drinking three Starbucks. Huh? <laughs> I feel like having a pity party because I feel like nobody around here appreciates me anyway, and I feel like God's a million miles away, and I feel, I feel, I feel. Stop asking yourself what you think, what you want, and how you feel. <laughs> and just do what God says to do. <laughs> Whatever he says to you, do it. When they ran out of wine at the wedding, the first place where Jesus did a miracle, there's a simple instruction there. Mary turned to the servants and she said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And they got a miracle. And I believe if we want to live in that miracle realm, we have to have that simple formula for our life. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. That's it. You don't have to understand it. Just do it. You may not understand it if God asks you to give away your favorite something or other to somebody who's already got three of them and it took you 10 years to save for the one you got and you're like. <laughs> but everything that God tells us to do doesn't make sense to our natural mind. It makes sense to him spiritually because he's after something totally different than what we even see. It's just like the whole thing about offerings. You know, God doesn't need our money. <laughs> if you sat here today and did nothing, God's not going to have to turn the lights out in heaven. <laughs> He's not up there, oh man, the offering was lousy this morning. What are we going to do? How am I going to keep Joyce going? I don't know. What, what am I going to do? This is really a problem, guys. <laughs> So why, I mean, you know, if God already owns everything anyway, then why does he ask us for our tithes and offerings? It has nothing to do with God needing money. It's a test. <laughs> it's a test. It's a test to see what we love and how much we love it. It's a test. And then we come up with all these excuses. Well, you can't trust them preachers. I'm not giving money to them preachers. <laughs> well, you're looking at it wrong anyway. Don't, you know, don't look at it like you're giving it to some person with an honest heart. Give it to God and know all you can know about where you're giving it. But you know, bottom line is, if they waste your money, you're still going to get a reward. So stop using that for an excuse. Whatever he says to you, do it. He says, bring all the tithe and the offering, do it. He says, be a peacemaker, do it. Well, it's not my turn. I apologized the last time, and I'm not going to apologize this time. <laughs> Every time we have a fight, I'm the one that has to apologize and make it right. Now, I'm just sick and tired of that, and I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> Come on, I've been there, done that. I mean, bought the T-shirt, got the tapes, everything. I know all about that. Dying to flesh means whatever he says to you on a day-to-day -day basis, you do it. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I die daily. Now, we're going to go back to some of these practical aspects, but I want to show you the reason why we have to die to self. 
Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. How many of you want to help people? How many of you want to leave a legacy and you want your life to count for something? How many of you would love to have a few hundred people in your lifetime say to you, you know what, because I knew you, it changed my life for the better. All right. Well, that's not going to happen if you don't die to self. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in verse 10. Always caring about in the body the liability and exposure to the same putting to death that the Lord Jesus suffered. But I don't think this is talking about when he actually physically died on the cross. I believe, <laughs> if I can say this properly, I, th I think a lot of Jesus' real passion was in the garden where he was making the decision. <laughs> because once you've made the decision, the rest of it isn't really as hard as you might think. It's that mental battle. And the Bible says that he had such pressure on his mind that he actually sweated blood, trying to make the decision about what to do. All day long, every day of your life, at various times throughout the day, week in and week out, year in and year out, you're making decisions. And every decision that you make not only affects you, but it affects people around you. So Paul said, speaking of himself and the other apostles, we're always carrying in the body the liability and exposure to the same putting to death the Lord Jesus suffered, so that the resurrection life of Jesus might also be shown forth by and in our bodies. You know what, you never get to Sunday without going through Friday. And everybody wants to live this resurrection life that Paul talked about, but it's on the other side of the cross. And there's no such thing as a padded cross. There are no crosses that don't hurt. Did you get it or do I need to go back and say it again? You got it? Okay. Verse 11, for we, for we who live, watch this, are constantly experiencing being handed over to death for Jesus' sake. Constantly, all day long, you're having to choose to humble yourself, which means that you don't try to take care of something yourself, you wait on God. All day long, the Holy Spirit deals with us about, oh, you shouldn't have said that, or you shouldn't have done that. Or, and all he wants to hear from us is, you're right, Lord, I'm sorry. A type of humility. Not an excuse, just, you're right, Lord, I'm sorry. You hurt somebody's feelings. You know down deep inside, God wants you to go and apologize. Well, that's going to be a little embarrassing. Maybe they didn't even notice I did anything wrong. Well, you noticed it. And it's bothering you. <laughs> so you need to get it straightened out. More humility. It's so hard. He said, we're constantly dealing with this thing about being handed over to death so that the resurrection life of Jesus might be shown through us. The resurrection life of Jesus. I always say you gotta die to live. Just like physical death, we believe as Christians that when you physically die, then you really begin to live the life that we're all meant to live in the presence of God without this body hindering us. So we talk about life after death. Well, you know, I believe here on earth there is no real life until after death. I don't think you can really live the way Jesus wants you to live until you learn it's not all about you. Okay, look, I'm gonna tell you something. This is a word from Mama Joyce. You cannot be selfish and happy at the same time. You're not sure you believe me. You cannot be selfish. Oh, you might get your way and get a little fleshly zing here and there, but 
I remember one time when Dave and I were out shopping and, and we were looking at some, some pictures. We needed some pictures for our walls. And like a lot of people that are married, Dave and I don't have a tendency to always like the same thing when it comes to decorating. And um, so he found a picture that he really liked. And of course, I didn't like it at all. And if I would have found one I liked, he wouldn't have liked it. That's just the way it goes. And so he said he liked this picture. I said, I don't like the picture. I like the picture. I don't like the picture. I don't want that picture. I just kept it up and kept it up and kept it up. How many of you ladies know anything about just keeping it, keeping, keeping on, keeping on, and keeping on, keeping on? So finally he just said, you know what? <laughs> it ain't worth the hassle. Just do what you want to. Well, I walked away from there. We didn't buy that picture, and I just felt so good for just a few seconds. And that's just about how long that little fleshly zing lasts. It's kind of like eating dessert. I finally got it figured out. That hot fudge, they even call them suicide cakes with the <laughs> gooey stuff and all the ice cream. And you're looking at, oh my God, I gotta have it, gotta have it, I gotta have it. <gasps> So in, depending on how much of it you eat, I mean, you know, a few, few seconds, two minutes, it's over. Now you're like, I wish I wouldn't have eaten that. <laughs> so now for the next 12 hours, you know, it takes you longer to get over it than it does to eat it. <laughs> and it takes you longer to get it off your hips than it took to get it in your mouth. Amen? But you know, and it's not that I never eat anything sweet because I do if I want it, but you know, sometimes I, I think it, it isn't worth it. Because I'm not hungry, I'm already full, and I know if I eat that, then I'm gonna be too full. And so I don't want to pay a high cost for a cheap thrill anymore. I don't want to pay that high price anymore just to have these taste buds go <laughs> for a few minutes and then I'm left with hours of I should have disciplined myself I should have used self-control <laughs> you know we, we have to realize that we're paying a high price for a cheap thrill of getting our own way all the time. But oh, if we will die to self in whatever it might be that God's talking to you about. And it's different for different people at different times in your life. One, God's doing with you about your mouth. Another one, it's wisdom. Somebody else, it's finances. Somebody else, it's your attitude in your marriage. Somebody else, it's your attitude on the job. Somebody else, it's integrity. It's always something. Whatever he says, do it. Either God's going to win in the end or you're going to be miserable anyway, so get that through your head and just get happy sooner. You cannot be selfish and happy. Well, as Dave and I came out of that store, and I just felt so, I won. And I'm telling you what, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, you didn't win, you lost. You lost. Because you acted bad. You know you did. You were disrespectful. You know you were. You were selfish. You know you were. Yeah, you got what you think you wanted. But I didn't really. Because my flesh was happy and my spirit was miserable. And I think we need to make our minds up, which part of us are we going to keep happy? Are we going to keep catering to the flesh while the spirit man grieves over the lost opportunities and the things that God wanted for us that he could never release to us because we never grew up? Some of you have been around the same mountain a million times. And you need to make a decision in this place this morning before I let you out of here. I have gone around that mountain the last time. I am not going through the same stupid thing for another 10 years. I'm going to get this over with. God, here I am. Have your way. 
You know what I've actually had to tell God when things were really hard for me? God, if you have to tie me to the altar, do whatever you want to do, but you have your way in my life. I don't care if I murmur, complain, moan, groan, throw fits. I'm telling you now, have your way. Don't just go around singing, I surrender all, if you don't mean it. Amen? Come on, this is good preaching. You're not smiling much, but it's good. All right, now, I'm getting there by why you have to die to self, what the benefit is. Verse 11 again, for we who live are constantly experiencing being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, that the resurrection life of Jesus also may be evidenced through our flesh, which is liable to death. Thus death is actively at work in us, but it is in order that our life might be actively at work in you. So he's saying, if I don't die to my flesh, then the life of God that's in me that you need can't get out of me to you. All right, let's go at it another way. <laughs> it's all right, I know how to get the spinach down your throat. I remember feeding my babies. You stick it in, they go <laughs> You scrape it up off their chin and stick it in again. So I'll stick with this till enough slides down your throat that you'll stay alive. As a Christian, the life of God is in you. All the fruit of the Spirit is in you. Love, you have the ability to love people. To be patient and good and kind and giving and humble. You have the ability to remain joyful in difficult situations. You have the ability to be stable. You're a giver, you're a lover at heart. That's what you are because you have the same spirit that God had. He said, I will give you my spirit. I will write my law in your heart. There's only one thing that stands between you and greatness and it's not even really the devil. It's your flesh. Your flesh. That's the only thing that stands between you and greatness. Just the whole thing about humbling ourselves. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due time he might exalt you. Well, humility is hard on the flesh. The flesh hates it. I mean, do you ever feel your, hear your flesh just going <laughs> 